may not look like much, but this right here, folks, is a young food forest in the making. A lot of these trees were only planted this winter. And the wood chips, all this whole section had been placed down just last year. So this is a very young food forest. We've got mulberry, black mulberry, black mulberry, another one on the other side down there. And we've got peach, hazelnut, there's a service berry right behind that blue bucket. And we've got another hazelnut. And another peach. Back there, another peach. Plum. And we've got pear. Goji berries in the bucket. And some throughout. There's another uh, mulberry fig. And then this is uh, Moringa oleifera. This comes back. It'll come back uh, shortly. It's always one of the later plants to come back up, but it will come back. And then we've got the two pawpaws here. We've got another mulberry, black mulberry, and another one there. An elderberry hiding right over there where that red flag is. Banana tree. Uh, pomegranate, which is just now coming back up to life from the bottom. Might get some leaves on the lower stems, but uh, it's a young tree, and so it's not coming back on the old canes, at least not the top, but some of the younger stuff will. And then we've got over here, oh, and in between, this is where we grow uh, on the ground, we grow, oh, oh, I forgot about this, bay laurel. And um, we've got about 50 to 60 years of corn and some squash and beans and peas spread throughout this section here and lots of sunflowers all over that are just coming up now. See, here's some right there and um, strawberries that are spreading out throughout. And then on this back trellis here, we do some tomatoes and cucumbers. And then we've got little herbs throughout too. And um, we'll pop in our um, roselle. They get to be a big bush, but they're annual here and not a perennial here because of our climate but they do take up a lot of room so those will get plopped in we've got some blackberries and goji berry here's another service berry it's young and i didn't get to put a high mulch mound around it and i didn't want anybody stepping on it so i put the bucket there just to mark the spot we've got another service berry over here different variety little baby one and we got some wild pine berry strawberries I just put some huckleberries in right here um, and then we've got our tender annual veggies with our um, banana tree and this is a rose of Sharon and in between we've got some uh, perennials that will come up. This is my pineapple sage. This gets to be a nice big bush. Probably about, I don't know if I had to guess, about four feet, if not bigger, um, tall. And it's just now coming back to life. Let me see here. We got some coming up. And so that'll fill in nice and wide in this spot. Obviously the Rose of, the Sh Rose of Sharon is a annual for us. I'm sorry, perennial. I've got another um, um, Moringa that'll come back. And our strawberry patch. Another strawberry patch. We've got strawberry patches all over. We got that one starting in the 
orchard area that I talked about. Oh, I didn't even show you. Around this, this is a um, magnolia tree. And on all four corners of that section, we have blueberry bushes. And then I'll take you over there and show you that in a minute. Here's an apple tree and of course perennial. And um, horseradish grows in there. And what other perennials do we have over here? These are all our annuals, which we just reseeded a whole bunch. Here's another, our other apple tree. And let's see here. Plopped in a bunch of, in this berm here, which is definitely ready for planting. I dug down in there. And so we put in some medicinal herbs and some pollinator goodies and lots of artichokes. So they get pretty big and hopefully they will be happy here. Art art artichokes that were growing in our other berms around the turtle pond loved it. So um, they did really well. So I'm hoping they do well here. Here's the blueberry. Um, and we have one on all four corners. Some are doing better than others, but they're all different varieties. So some are just later coming back than others. And see, this one's just now coming back. It didn't leaf out like uh, as quickly as the other ones did. And then over here, more blueberries. And some bumblebees. Little bumblebee friend. Hi, friend. <laughs> And uh, we've got artichoke, um, not artichokes, asparagus coming back up here in the mounds that surround this. And another um, blueberry. And uh, I have to drain that. We had um, all season long up until winter, we had our goldfish in there and some water plants, but we brought them in for winter and put them inside of our indoor tank. So it's about time that I clean this out and put the fish back outside because it's warm enough now. And what else? Let's see here. So over here, we've got our grapevines that are just now leafing out. And I have not yet gotten to get to the store. I've got to get metal posts to replace this with. We're gonna redo this whole section here. That's on my to-do list. And I forgot the name of these little trees or bushes. Uh, my friend gave me them, but they flower with small flowers, I believe, and you can kind of shape them. They're, they're a kind of tree that you can shape. And Back here, we've got some elderberry bushes. There's one here, one here. And there's another one hiding in here somewhere that I never got around to finishing the mulch, but I will. And in between, we've got some medicinal herbs. We've got the heal all, and I cannot remember what I put in here, but I put seed in here not long ago. And then this spot here, a big hot mess over here <laughs> is uh, passion fruit vines grow out of these mounds here and they have not quite come back yet but they will and they're may pops the um, native variety and then we've got our mushroom logs and a bunch of starter plants that I'm transitioning outside and let's see what else and then our turtle pond area. This is where our red air slider turtles live. And I planted because it gets really hot in summer and the water gets hot. So I planted some high things, uh, some sunflowers and some other really tall growing stuff in these pots. And that'll help kind of offer some shade. Plus I have this swing that's broken and we ended up putting the uh, uh, hammock up. So I don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna fashion this and make like a sunscreen for the pond, for the turtles. And um, 
it's a small little pond, but it's easy for me to manage because we don't have a filtration system yet. So um, there's no electric over here. So I just every, you know, once in a while I'll dump it out. It's small enough that I could just easily dump it and refill. But um, yeah, and then I've got some lemongrass that I need to take out of that pot and divide and get planted. And so yeah, it looks naked and empty, but give it about two months and you'll see as everything starts to fill in and grow, how amazing the transformation is. And then give it about two years and come back and check it out and you'll see how big these trees have gotten and, and it'll really feel like a true food forest. So it's just, it takes time, you know, a lot of work, a lot of effort, and you have to start somewhere. And so if you are interested in doing a food forest, be patient with it, be patient with yourself. Don't take on more than you can handle at one given moment. Like I just started, when I started, I just started with just a small bit of garden over there and then I extended it and then the next thing you know I extended it all the way to the end and that was all I had the first year with exception to I had plopped in a few of these trees and just put some mulch around it and then the next year uh, or throughout the year I wood chipped this and it's about eight to ten inches of wood chips on top of cardboard and then I started to fill in and it was even through just this past winter that I was still filling in and planting. Like I just planted the hazelnuts and this peach and a few of these in here. So definitely um, be patient. And it's, it's definitely not something that's going to happen overnight unless you have lots of money and lots of helping hands and you can hire people to, to do it all. But uh, that's, you know the average person is going to want to put the effort in and pour their love and energy into it because the rewards that you get out of it is just that much greater. So just my advice is to be patient. It is not something that's going to, you know, show the results right away, uh, but it, you will get the results. And if you take your time and think it through, Think about spacing, think about what's going to do well with each other, think about your canopy and then your lower um, bushes and then your ground covers and things like that. So, and also, you know, financially, it's, it, trees are expensive and so it may take you some time to obtain everything that you have. I, I recommend that you do a lot of bartering and trading and also get maybe one of the things that you like and then propagate them for items that you can propagate. If it's like trees and you need to air layer, you know, that's something that's going to take a lot longer. You got to wait for the trees to be a little bit more mature, but things like fig that that's easy enough to propagate from cuttings and, um, you know, so stuff like that. Just think about those options. And I think that's it. I think those are the tips I can offer. I often have people asking like, what tips can you share with me for starting my food forest? And that's the tip, be patient and don't bite off more than you can chew. You know, it's not something that's gonna happen overnight. My project, I'm, I'm, I'm only a quarter of the way through my project um, because this is just a tiny portion of our homestead. We have three and a half acres. We go a bit into the woods, about an acre into the woods and all the way up to the front, which we started doing our nut orchard up there and um, pollinator stuff and lots of native edibles and all kinds of goodies. But, um, you know, this has been about, we're going on, I'd say two years now. This is our uh, two years of active working. Like, because the first year we were here, we really didn't do much. Um, I, I didn't even have a, solid plan in place and um, so this is going on to our second full year of active working and um, I'm only a quarter of the way through 
So like I said, it's, it's something that's gonna take time and uh, expect that. Patience and um, yeah, that's the advice I can offer. Start small, like I did, like I said, that one little section and then go from there. Don't have this vision that you're gonna totally transform the whole space in one year. <clears throat> That's not going to happen. <clears throat> I did most of this work myself. We did have a few volunteer days out here. And um, so we had some friends come and help us with, I think, about that section of the mound on that side. And the mounds over here. Um, but most of everything else, I did myself. And I don't have any motorized equipment or a whole lot. I have my my mower that has a cart, a pull cart that attaches to it. And I used that for a good bit of it, but um, my cart's flat. It's got two flat tires. I ran over some of the mulch that had some wild plum trees in it and they had wicked spikes and they went through my tires. And so now I have two flat tires. So I've been doing a lot of work with by hand with that little cart. <laughs> and, um, and that's okay, you know, you don't need to have special equipment to do this. I actually find, oops, sorry about that one. I actually find that doing it manually is so rewarding. One, you get a good workout and who doesn't need exercise? Everybody needs exercise. And two, it is so rewarding when you turn around and you see your labor of love turn into this beautiful space and like I said I know um, it doesn't look so beautiful to some of you right now because all the trees are naked they're still dormant but when this fills in I, I remember last year when it filled in and we didn't even have all of these trees yet we had about half the amount of trees that were in here and it looked nice and full so I know I'm excited for this year to see how much more full it's gonna look this year and uh, it's really going to start shaping into a food, quote unquote, forest. So, yeah, that that's it. Shoot me, shoot me some comments and what questions you might have and what tips I could share with you. Um, I I don't know. That really, those are the, the main things that I can say. Now, I mean, of course, I could give you instruction on how to do the back to Eden or lasagna layering, but that's not what I'm, I'm talking about today. Today, I'm specifically talking about tips on taking on a large scale project of a putting in a food forest. And um, yeah, so that's it. Love you guys. I hope you all are happy and well and um, you know, enjoying the peaceful time that you have at home right now. I know some of you would prefer that it wasn't the way it is, but the reality of it, the reality of it is that we are in the circumstances we are in with this COVID-19. And so now is the best time to take the opportunity to build yourself a food forest of your own and plant food and get back to our roots of homesteading and yeah so take that in i love you guys from kindred acres